Hi everyone, I'm Taylor Hudak with Activism Munich and welcome back to another Julian Assange case update. At the most recent call over hearing held on August 14th, it was stated in court that the United States Attorney General William Barr issued a replacement extradition request for Julian Assange. This comes just two days after Assange's defense team submitted final evidence to the court for the extradition hearing in September. This new extradition request is based off of the new superseding indictment issued in June, making the previous indictment invalid. The new indictment does not include any additional charges, but adds alleged conduct to the already existing charge, conspiracy to commit computer intrusion. Sputnik journalist Mohamed El Mazi reported that during the hearing on August 14th, Barrister Florence Iveson, acting for the defense, stated that the United States' decision to issue a second superseding indictment at the 11th hour was astonishing and potentially an abuse of conduct. U.S. prosecutors claim that the new material in the indictment is the result of a continuing investigation. However, the new allegations presented in the indictment are based off of information that was publicly available in 2010 and 2011, nearly a decade ago. I've since argued that the court should disregard this new fact pattern in the new indictment in order to prevent another delay of the hearing. The U.S. government, which was represented by Claire Dobbin, stated that such a decision is outside the jurisdiction of the court. Judge Vanessa Baratzer agreed with Dobbin, stating that it is not open to the court to exclude evidence. Baratzer went on to say that she does not have any ability to choose which aspects of the request to consider or not consider. Assange has not been rearrested under the new extradition request and has yet to even review the document. He did meet with his attorneys for the first time in nearly five months prior to the hearing, but was denied a post-court meeting. Baratzer gave the defense until Friday, August 21st to make a decision on whether to postpone the September 7th hearing. Assange's father, John Shipton, who was present in the courtroom, caught up with journalist Mohammed El Mazi outside the courthouse. The prosecution is making every effort to ensure that the uh, seventh, the hearing on the seventh of September, doesn't go ahead, and uh, the hearing is delayed until after the American uh, uh, election. So when uh, a new uh, uh, administration will be in power, and they will be able to put energy and effort in, and time into uh, the persecu further persecution of Julian. Uh, we hope that the uh, court will rule that this is another abuse of practice and, uh, and the hearing go ahead on the 7th of September. And like previous hearings, journalists and NGO observers had difficulty covering and monitoring the hearing over the teleconference line. Only a few journalists were allowed to be physically present in the courtroom, leaving many having to report remotely. It is also worth noting that the prosecution failed to show up in court and had to attend the hearing over the phone due to confusion over the start time. Judge Baratzer was reportedly very unhappy. The hearing this morning was not open justice. Only five journalists were allowed into the courtroom. All the other journalists, dozens of them, plus representatives from NGOs, were put on a hold on a phone-in service. They waited for an hour because Belmar's prison had yet again failed to produce Julian Assange into the video booth to be able to attend to court. When he finally attended, it emerged that the prosecution was not present. Journalist and friend of Julian Assange, Juan Passarelli, who was live tweeting the hearing, stated that a psychiatric report issued by the defense indicated that Assange's mental health has deteriorated over the past few weeks. When the judge asked Assange if he was able to follow the court proceedings, he reportedly did not sound like himself when he responded. Assange stated that he was able to hear most of what the judge was saying. Passarelli stated in a tweet, as someone who knows him well, I can say without a doubt he did not sound well. But in other news, to add to the list of professionals who are coming out publicly in support of Assange, the group Lawyers for Assange issued an open letter to the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. The open letter, signed by more than 150 lawyers and 15 lawyers associations, are stating that government authorities are violating national and international law in the Assange case. 
The letter has been translated into five languages and calls upon the UK government to act in accordance with the law. It outlines several violations in the case, including A. The illegality of potential extradition to the US. B. The violations of freedom of the press and the right to know. C. Violations of the right to be free from torture, the right to health, and the right to life. And D. The violations of a right to a fair trial. The open letter cites the conflicts of interest in the case surrounding Lady Arbuthnot, who is financially linked to institutions and individuals whose corruption has been exposed in WikiLeaks publications. Arbuthnot has yet to formally recuse herself from the case. Additionally, it alleges that Assange's legal privilege has been infringed upon due to the surveillance that took place in the Ecuadorian embassy. One of the signatories, the AA General Secretary, Luis Carlos Moro, stated that, quote, the extradition of Mr. Assange sets a risky precedent for the entire democratic world because it represents, rather than due process of law, an undue process of political persecution, end quote. To learn more about Lawyers for Assange, visit the website lawyersforassange.org and follow the group on Twitter at Lawyers, the number four, Assange. And to become involved in Julian Assange's fight for freedom, for freedom of the press, as well as the public's right to know, visit don'textraditeassange.com. This, of course, has to end. This only ends if the public, if you, take a stand. You have to be a witness. Because if this continues, you will be bearing witness to the worst judicial scandal in decades in the United Kingdom. It cannot happen. Assange's hearing will resume on September 7th at the Old Bailey in London. And if you have missed any of the updates thus far, you can get caught up by checking out our Julian Assange case updates playlist. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel as we will continue to cover this case. I'm Taylor Hudak with Activism Munich. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in my next report.